can't stop okay, okay, hustling okay, okay. every minute, every second. Can't stop. Results from the first round of the WWE Draft. A former WWE superstar debuts an impact and CM Punk backstage at another promotion. All this and more on this brand new edition of Shot of Brew. What's up, party people? This is Bros Brews and Botches with a WWE Draft heavy episode of Shot of Brew. It's your bro. Yellow boy. And if this is your first time watching, this is a shot of brew where we bring you a shot of news from this week in professional wrestling. But before we get going, make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell so that you know when the bros are bringing you something new to you, the people. You people. And without further ado, Let's get to the news. On Friday, the WWE draft began on SmackDown and continued into Saturday with more first round picks. So on Friday's edition of SmackDown, the show started with good old Papa H announcing the draft and presenting the first four draft picks. Now, contrary to popular belief, Roman Reigns was not the number one draft pick. Hear me out, hear me out, listen. If you go back and watch the show, Paul Heyman was named first in the collective of the bloodline. Yeah, go back and watch. Paul Heyman was the number one draft pick, not Roman Reigns. And to go along with that, that draft pick was Paul Heyman, Solo Sokoa, and the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns uh, remaining on SmackDown. Now, the Usos were not in that collective of the bloodline. Crazy enough, they weren't eligible for the state. They weren't eligible for the draft on Friday, but they will be eligible on Monday. Now, the remaining picks for that first set were as follows. Cody Rhodes to stay on Raw. The Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, to go to SmackDown. And Becky Lynch to remain on Raw. Now, we'll cover the remaining draft picks from Friday real quick before we make some predictions or any analysis over the picks that were made. So the next set of picks were announced by Michael P.S. Hayes. Back free Atlanta GA. My bad. And Rob Van Dam. Yeah. Now, the picks for that next set were the Street Profits, Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, to SmackDown, all of Imperium, and that would be Ludwig Kaiser, Giovanni Vinci, and the Intercontinental Champion, Gunta. I can't do it as well as Samantha Urban, but you get what I'm saying. But Imperium is now moving over to Raw with that Intercontinental Championship. Edge will now be on SmackDown, and Matt Riddle will remain on Raw. After that, the next set was announced by John Bradfield Layfield, Bradshaw Layfield, excuse me, JBL, representing SmackDown for some reason, and well-known general manager for SmackDown, Theodore Teddy Long, represented Raw, again, for reasons. So the picks in this set were as followed. Bobby Lashley to SmackDown, Drew McIntyre to Raw, the entire collective of the OC, which includes AJ Styles, Gallows and Anderson, and Mia Yim to SmackDown, and The Miz remains on Raw. Now, the final set of picks on Friday night were announced by HBK and Road Dog. Now, the picks for this set were Damage Control, and that's Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky to SmackDown. Shinsuke Nakamura to Raw, and then we had an NXT call up out of the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, not Isla as Michael Cole kept calling her when he first announced, is Isla Dawn, 
And the final call or the final pick was another call up, which was the NXT Women's Champion, Indy Hartwell, Hartwell to Raw. So, out of this first set of picks or first night of picks, two NXT call ups, which I'm sure no one had those on their bingo cards for the call ups. I'm sure other people were probably in their minds. But what's interesting about some of this is that while Raw is three hours long and SmackDown only two, SmackDown received more superstars due to all the teams, the collective teams that were selected. And it could also be said that WWE is keeping with allowing couples to remain on the same brand as we've seen Bianca Belair and Montez Ford are now going to be on SmackDown. It can also be assumed possibly that Seth Rollins will remain on Raw with Becky Lynch, putting him as a front runner, that's Seth Rollins, as a front runner for that new World Heavyweight Championship that was introduced by Papa H on Monday. Also, it could be a safe bet to say that SmackDown is attempting to beef up their women's division as it kind of looked weaker in comparison to Raw's previously. So, all of that. Now, in addition to the picks on Friday night, on Saturday morning, the Peacock produced show SmackDown Lowdown had additional picks for the first round. Now, these picks were as follows. The Viking Raiders, Dexter Loomis, Candice LeRae, Maximum L Models, which are Massé, Mansois, and Maxime Dupree, NX call up, NXT call-up Zoe Stark, NXT call-up JD McDonough, formerly known as Jordan Devlin, a returning Apollo Crews, Natalia, and Sonya Deville and Chelsea Green, the complaint department, all of them will be going to Raw. Now for SmackDown, they selected Hit Row, which is Ashanti the Adonis, uh, Top Dollar, and B Fab, and Lacey Evans all will be on SmackDown. So it'd be curious to see how WWE solves that problem with the with the women's titles that they have, but hopefully it won't be the title exchange like they did in previous years. Also, it appears that Raw is bringing on more potential contenders for the new championship. Hopefully it doesn't get looked at as the secondary or lesser title, but that's kind of why myself and others have thought that Seth freaking Rollins would be the front runner for that belt because he hadn't been beat by Roman Reigns. So we'll see. Now Monday we'll continue with the draft and we'll see what kind of surprises will happen then. Now, speaking about surprises and talking about a former WWE superstar making headlines this past week, the former Naomi made her debut on Impact Wrestling tapings this past weekend. At the Spring Slugfest tapings in Chicago on April 29th, Trinity Fatu made her Impact debut after reports like what was here on Shot of Brew last week stated that you know her debut in Impact was imminent and it happened. So during her in-ring return, Trinity squared off against one half of the Knockouts Tag Team Champions, Kylan King. Several videos that have now surfaced about the debut and Trinity herself was interviewed about her exit from WWE by NBC Chicago. Within this interview, Trinity reported, quote, I feel like it was a blessing in disguise. I feel like it allowed me to grow and become better in every way, in every aspect, unquote. Now, Trinity joins a stacked knockouts division that has performers such as Jordan Grace, Killer Kelly, Masha Slamovich, and the knockouts champion, Deanna Perrazzo. Now, from reports and from what was shown, Trinity was not alone during her debut as her former team bad stablemates, Mercedes Monet and Tamina, were in attendance at the show. Now, they weren't going to be on the show. Mercedes Monet actually bought a ticket, so they were out in the crowd. So th there's no plans for them wrestling for Impact Wrestling. They were there in support of Trinity Fatu. Now, speaking of former WWE superstars at the Impact tapings, CM Punk 
name that you're hearing a lot these days, CM Punk was also at the Spring Slugfest tapings backstage on Saturday. So one of the headlines from last week was that CM Punk was backstage at Raw talking to some of the talent and to Triple H. Well, it looks like the CM Punk World Tour continues as he was spotted backstage at the Impact tapings. Now, Fightful Select reported that Punk was welcomed there and was brought through by security past, quote, numerous fans, unquote, which is contrast to what happened to him when he was backstage at Raw, where security escorted him out at the acquiesce, I believe, of one Vincent Kennedy McMahon. So totally different there. He was welcomed in at Impact. Now, Impact knockout Jordan Grace confirmed Punk's presence by posting on social media and saying, you never know who's going to show up at Impact Wrestling and the picture of her and Punk standing side by side, which hopefully I've put somewhere in this vicinity. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Um, so, more of will we see CM Punk show up somewhere else this week? Ah, who knows? CM Punk does what CM Punk wants to do. How about that? But, since this has been a fully packed episode of Shot of Brew, the next story will be the final story instead of my normal five. So, the next one is on the lighter note. So, Two second generation wrestlers may be waking their way to television very soon. So this is coming from our friends at Wrestle, WrestlingNews.co. Jazzy Yang, who is the daughter of former WWE superstar Jimmy Wang Yang, if y'all remember that back in the early 2000s, Jimmy Wang Yang has been wrestling on the indie scene. Now her first match was a tag match in 2021. And she's wrestled for multiple indie promotions around the country since, making a name for herself. So she's up and coming. And in addition to that, you also have another second generation wrestler, Jaden Funaki. Jaden Funaki being the son of WWE superstar and SmackDown's number one reporter, Funaki. Indeed. Or how about I do the say a whole bunch of stuff and move my mouth. I ain't going to do that and have indeed on. Nah, I ain't going to do that. But Funaki, his son, began his training at the Hybrid School of Wrestling in San Antonio. Now, we'll see if both will eventually find their way to NXT or if they'll be somewhere else, but only time will tell for these two who have some great pedigree family lineage. And that was the news, everyone. Make sure that you like this video and if you could be so kind as always to comment on the video in order to help aid us with that pesky algorithm and get us on our way to 1K subscribers. Also, please check out the description below to follow the bros on all of our social media and get yourself some merchandise from Elevated Creation. Get that bros, brews, and botches merch. And as normal, if you're enjoying the music that you're hearing in the background, make sure you check the description for DJ L Spade and go check out some of the projects that he's working on. And if that wasn't enough, set your notifications on Twitch to the Bros, Brews, and Botches channel because I've begun playing through the My Rise section on WWE 2K23. Now, the kicker about this is, is that when I go live, I'm allowing whoever in the chat to determine what I do in my rise. So this thing will totally be up to the chat and majority rules. So whatever you guys vote on is what I will do and how I will play that game. So make sure you have those set for 2K23 or to Twitter for me to play 2K23. Um, I may do some later on this evening. We shall see. Eventually, we'll have Hogs Wars, who is currently playing through MLB The Show on his personal time. Maybe he'll post some of that or some of the other games that he started to get into uh, on Twitch. So just make sure you have your notifications set so that you know when we're posting on Twitch. And per normal, OHB over here, boy, will post some stuff as well. So make sure you set those notifications. Speaking of OHB, make sure that you're checking out on 
Monday, the Mad Dog Mondays, on Thursdays, the Sips. Now, I will say that next week, I'm not sure if I will or won't um, post and make a shot of brew next weekend. Next weekend happens to be the weekend that I take another trip around the, the earth. So, or a completed trip has happened around the earth for me. It's my birthday next weekend. So I may or may not post something up here. Just make sure you have your notification set and you won't have to worry about it. But anyway, that's all that I have. So I want to, per normal, thank you all for watching. And as always, we love you. And until next time, Debated, I'm making it popping like bacon and eggs in the kitchen. Been whipping and getting it in. Homie, face the greatest is here.